All right, guys, today in this video, we're gonna try to be as brief as we can, but I thought it'd be fun to break down one of every locking mechanism, or I guess um, some degree of locking mechanism. I, we're gonna run with locking mechanism for the sake of this video. I might change it in the title, but basically one of every locking system in my collection. And so I have quite a few knives and even more than that, I have quite a few variances of knives. So different types of, you know, blade shapes, different types of locks, steels, all that kind of stuff. So I thought it'd be fun to go over every style of knife um, or at least locking mechanism in the collection. So first off, we're gonna break it or we're gonna start off with illegal knives or the knives that are usually prohibited in most states. So the first one off here is the auto access lock. Now this one I'm going to distinguish differently because technically the core locking mechanism is an access lock. Um, so there I have that specifically like as another knife, but for this one, this is the auto access. So this is classified as a switchblade and the access lock not only features as a means of of locking this blade, but also as a means of deploying this knife. So this is the auto axis. This one, of course, is featured on a full-sized Benchmade Auto Adamus. All right, next one up is going to be a traditional or at least more traditional switch blade. Um, this is a button style lock. So you hit the button and the blade fires out. This one, of course, is the Protect Strider Auto SNG, but pretty basic, pretty straightforward button lock slash button. Um, deployment kind of uh, or button lock slash switch blade, I guess you could say. This one, very similar to the Axis lock. There are non-automatic versions of button locks out there that exist, but this one just happens to be an automatic and a button lock at the same time. All right, next one up is, of course, good old uh, OTFs or out the front. This, of course, uses a switch at the top or sometimes on the sides of the blade to release a blade that is under spring tension. Most specifically, this one's actually a double action OTF. There are also single action OTFs that you, you know, hit a button or you hit some form of depression and it fires out the blade. And it's very similar to the button lock where you do have to physically or manually retract the blade because the spring is only driving it in one direction. Now, this is, of course, a double action so that means that the springs uh, drive it both forward and backwards or I should say out and back. So anyways that is of course on my Heretic Knives Manticore X. This one of course is in Bounty Hunter styling. All right, next one up is going to be the Paragon Phoenix slash Paragon Warlock. This specifically is the Phoenix here, but you'll see this locking mechanism. I forget what they call this mechanism, but Paragon has patented this. And essentially I like to call this kind of a baby balisong because it still does require gravity to open and close the blade, but it is a pretty straightforward um, handle design. So your handles pop open, exposing the blade and so your handles are next to each other as opposed to them being opposed with a traditional balisong. So this is still a gravity knife proper, but not quite a balisong. Next one up is a true to form balisong. This one here is a Mantis Knives um, fly switch. So you guys can see, this is a true, true to form balisong. Um, but yeah, so this is uh, pretty basic, pretty straightforward. Um, this is once again still legally categorized as a gravity knife because once again very much like the just like the Paragon knives, uh, Phoenix, it does require gravity to open and close. Though most balisongs, being their handle design and how they're you know shaped and everything, move pretty naturally and pretty fluidly. All right, now we're gonna step into some non-illegal knives and some more basic designs, things that you guys have probably seen before and maybe some that you haven't. So the first one up is going to be the good old classic liner lock. This is of course on a red wrap model one. And so there's not too much to say about it. It's a good knife, it's a cool blade, um, but yeah, it's just a liner lock. And so you guys can see that little liner tab there. You just push, push it in and your blade closes, right? Okay, next one up is going to be a little bit more untraditional or unusual as I fail to open it properly. This is a um, 
Demco Knives 80 20.5, and this one is using the Shark Lock. So this is the Shark Lock. This little tab on the back locks into the blade in a very similar manner to how a lockback would work. The only difference is this you can actuate and deploy um, with this Shark Lock tab, and you can also close it one-handed. I've done plenty of videos on the Shark Lock. I do really like it because I think it's very, um, it falls into a category of very safe to use, very easy to use blade. All right, now we're gonna talk about probably my least favorite locking mechanism. And I say locking mechanism in air quotes because this one doesn't really lock, but this is a slip joint. So it's still worth talking about. This is of course a GEC pocket carver. And this one, like I said, is a slip joint. So it has no real proper locking mechanism to it. Okay, next one up is the axis lock or crossbar lock. This one technically is not an axis lock because this is OEM'd by TRM. So this is a TRM shadow, um, but the, the patent for the axis lock has expired. So we do see aftermarket companies like TRM making their own in-house versions of the axis or crossbar lock. So anyways, works well, works great. Um, this is once again, very similar to the shark lock. It falls into that category where you can open and close or lock and unlock the knife without having to put your fingers in front of the blade. So things like the frame lock, liner lock, and others, you do have to briefly for a moment, expose your finger to you know turn off that lock, so to speak, so that the blade can drop closed. We'll see that more on the next one up, which is the frame lock. And so for the frame lock, I chose my McNeese Mac 2. And once again, this is a frame lock. So you guys can see the actual bit that does the locking right there. And once again, to close it, like I was saying, you do have to, for a moment, put your finger in front of that blade or closing path to unlock the knife so that the blade can close. Once again, this doesn't usually result in you being cut. However, it does introduce that fact you know your finger does have to be in front of a moving closing blade all right next one up is going to be the compression lock and for the compression lock i chose probably the more confusing version of the compression lock though i have a few examples this one is a kind of button lock version so basically this button is um, screwed into, hopefully you can see on the back here, screwed into a little locking tab. And so that tab of metal is actually what does the locking in this case. That button is just there to make that um, hidden liner um, accessible so that you can unlock it. So this once again is a kind of special version, but at the core, this is a compression lock. And a compression lock uses the same basic principles as a liner lock. It's just reversed, um, so it's up towards the top and the nice thing about the compression lock is it's designed to lock in with the um, stop tab or the uh, stop pin I should say so it gives that locking bar a little bit more stabilization when it is in the locked position because it's resting up against one the blade stock like the blade the tang of the blade and that stop pin so it gives you a little bit more um, strength. All right, next one up is going to be the ball bearing lock. This is another one that's pretty proprietary to Spyderco. If I remember correctly, Spyderco actually has a patent on the ball bearing lock, so you cannot just use it. But the ball bearing lock is, I would say, kind of Spyderco's response to the um, crossbar or axis lock because it shares a lot of similar properties. Now it is a little bit more robust because it uses like spiral um, springs behind the um, ball bearing to actually put force in the locked position. So it's a little bit more robust and a little bit less likely to break, but it does the same thing, basically achieves the same goals. All right. Almost last one up is the good old lockback. So the lockback has seen many iterations. There's also the triad lock out there, but they're all basically just lockbacks. So you use this tab right here to push in your blade. And this one on the Spyderco Delica 4 can be done one-handed, though you can see it's not a super simple process, but it can be done. 
All right, finally, we have the fixed blade. Not too much to say here, it's just a fixed blade. It is not a pre-broken knife, as some people like to say about folding knives um, or any type of knife that's not a fixed blade. They like to call them pre-broken knives, but um, yeah. Anyways, guys, hopefully you enjoyed taking a look at some of my collection's different uh, locking mechanisms or closing mechanisms. As you can see, there are a absolute ton of them. Some of them are legally um, restricted, some of them are not, but they all basically achieve the same goal, except the slip joint, because the slip joint doesn't lock. Every other one is just achieving a different means, or is a different means to the same uh, outcome of getting a knife that will lock. Anyways, guys, hopefully you enjoyed the video. As always, God bless, and I'm out.